below that is a button that once again has a few different purposes. The first is the white balance button. Pressing it once will clear the LCD panel and allow you to use the rear command dial to select from the different white balance settings that the D7000 has to offer. Let's talk a little bit about white balance is and why it's important to your camera and photography in general. Back in the time we shot film, you used to purchase film that was designed for specific types of light. You might remember seeing film like tungsten or outdoors and things like that. Well, we've left the film world and now we shoot digital, but your camera still needs to know what kind of light you're shooting in. So white balance was developed. You see, your camera needs to know what color is white in your scene so it can set all the other colors of the scene correctly. Let's take a look at different types of white balance settings and how they can change how your picture looks. Now the first white balance setting is AWB for auto white balance. This means that the camera will select your white balance for you. I found it to be pretty accurate most of the time for most people shooting. And additionally, if you're shooting in RAW mode, you can always make minor corrections in your image editing program. This normal looking light bulb is called incandescent. You'd want to use something like this if you were shooting in a place that was lit by regular light bulbs or perhaps under studio lighting. The long bar indicates you're shooting in fluorescent white balance mode. Fluorescent lighting can be really tricky. The sun, by the way, typically means you're shooting outside on a sunny day. And the little lightning bolt symbol indicates you're shooting with flash. You can use this white balance shooting setting with flash either on your camera or perhaps you might have a studio lighting system. The clouds mean you're shooting on a cloudy day, while the house that's in the shade means you're not necessarily in the shade, but you're shooting into a shady area. K stands for degrees Kelvin. If you happen to know what the color temperature of the light is, you can set it here. This might be used if you're using studio lighting and you know it's a certain color temperature. The next setting is for manually setting your white balance. To do your own white balance, simply select the pre white balance setting. Release the button, but then press it again until the pre icon starts flashing. It only flashes for about six seconds. Then point your camera at the white card or cloth, filling your viewfinder completely. Press and release the shutter button. While it will not take a picture, it will measure the white balance for you. If you're successful, you'll see the word good on your screen. You now have a custom white balance. If the lighting was either too dark or too bright, you'll get a flashing no GD symbol. If this should happen, press the shutter button halfway and measure the white balance again until you get the good symbol. Now, perhaps you want to design your own look. Lots of photographers do. One of the ways you can accomplish this is by having a white card that you bring with you. You can pick the warmer whites or the colder whites to essentially have your own look or style. It's a great way, by the way, to blow off a rainy Sunday afternoon to experiment with developing your own white balance for indoor shots. Give it a try, it's kind of fun. As I said earlier, I tend to use auto white balance for the majority of my work, and the reason is that I always shoot in RAW. And when you shoot in RAW and develop your images in a program like Adobe Lightroom, Apple Aperture, or Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, you have some additional tools to help you get the colors right. While I'm in Lightroom, and you can see I can select the various different white balance settings, or I can even adjust it manually. See how my image changes just based on which white setting? I can even make a manual white balance here too. Essentially, what I'm trying to show you is how white balance can affect your color accuracy. But if you shoot in AWB and RAW, you can make adjustments after the fact. Now, this is not available in the JPEG format. 
To conclude our look at white balance, I want to show you what the same outdoor scene would look like under the different white balance settings, including the last one, which was shot under a manual white balance using a cold white card, and a warmer white card for this example.